Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my channel. As promised when I did the fried pork chop, I told you guys I was going to be doing a separate video with the smothered pork chop. The ones that asked me to fix, uh, prepare uh, smothered pork chop and smothered chicken, I haven't forgot about it yet. But um, I was just um, waiting till my husband asked for some smothered pork chop. Cause you know we have to eat this food that we prepare preparing and everything. So this is my smothered pork chop video. These are the chops I'm gonna be doing, and I got the flour. And you know, you know, you guys, I'm gonna put this on and show you how I, I, I start my chops and all that stuff. But you're gonna have to go back to my fried pork chop video to see all this pre, uh, preliminary steps I went to beforehand. It's no sense in me going back over that again when I already got a video out showing you the fried pork chop and I'm just going to, it's going to be sort of like a work in progress that you already, I'm just, I'm just assuming that you already know what I'm going to do or how to fry pork chop. My old, my subscribers that been with me a while and my new subscribers, you're going to see enough to let you know when you have something that you miss. All you got to do is go back and uh, uh, view my uh, smoke, I mean my uh, fried pork chop video. You need to support me in that way anyway with uh, uh, viewing my old videos. Okay, I already got my flour seasoned up. You know, you guys, I told you it's so important that you do this season and stuff to uh, to your liking and I did in my uh, pork chop video I, I do be seasoning the pork chop because I had a young lady to ask me uh, you know what type of season do I use so I showed her but you see I got the about the same season the uh, give or take more or less and uh, I hope my uh, oil hadn't got too hot while I was getting set up so uh, I'm gonna get ready to go ahead on it Put some of these pork chops and stuff in the uh, in the skillet. Get them fried up and out of the way. And then I'm gonna come back and make the gravy. And then uh, put the pork chops in and show you how we smother. I mean, how I smother pork chop. You know, smother pork chop. They are delicious. Let me see. I might better test my grease. Oh yeah, it's ready. This one skillet is about like my cast iron. You see, I'm shaking the, uh, you may can't see it good, but I'm shaking off all the excess flour. But all I don't get off, it's going to go in the bottom of the skillet. It's going to be all good. Yep, it was ready. You know, I'm not going to overcrowd my skillet with my pork chop. And, uh, Get all my stuff out like I should have. Thank right. goodness they're right here at hand. I'm just gonna get it moved around. I just fry your pork chops for this. Done. Whichever way that you like them, because you know it's gonna happen when I put it in the gravy, it's gonna simmer in that gravy a while too. So remember what I told you guys about pork. Not well, pork or proteins or whatever. Don't fry it too fast and don't fry it too hard. Frying it well, frying it too fast makes pork tough. So I got this on a six right now. Hold on just a minute, let me rinse my hands off. Guys, I'm gonna be fixing some rice and uh and some uh rice and we're going to have some collards and stuff with this 
you know why we why I've been off and not making the videos? I thought of a lot of ways that I could bring you guys better content. And starting with this one, I'm like, I don't have to take them from point A to all the way through simply because I have already did a pork chop video because I be doing this all the time, cooking when I'm cooking stuff. I don't do a video on it because I've already cooked it, even though I may have a, 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 something that I'm cooking that you have a, have given me a already gave given me a request for it, and I just I just wasn't thinking to do that. I could just add that my already video in with my um, with a new request or something that you want, like this, like right now, if I had been fixing uh snap beans I could have did my snap bean video with this here because normally we do be having snap beans but since we had those collards already and you know I already got a video up you guys doing the fried collard greens and um uh, but I'll have I don't have a video up doing the uh, uh snap beans yet but um uh, I'm gonna start doing that you guys you know just if I like uh I'm gonna be doing. I'm going to be doing rice with this. I've already showed you the rice video, and um, so I'm not gonna show you uh, the process of preparing the rice. And I've already had uh, did the uh, uh, buttermilk biscuits, and we probably and my husband's not gonna. We're not having biscuits with this today. We're just having probably um, some. Um, uh, I'll probably even do some corn mix, corn muffins, or uh, either the uh, um, hot water cornbread. I don't know which one we gonna, I'm going to do. My husband's been uh, saying that he needs to kind of watch it a little bit and pull it back out the bread and stuff. So, but he always want to have some with his collar. And, uh, but I, I, um, I prepared these collars. Uh, a few days ago, that's when I went to the store. You know, I told you guys I was so happy to see the stores looking like normal. It wasn't looking like, you know, the buzz was unpicked over. Not the, but I'm not saying the people was the buzz, but I'm saying they were so bare and everything was so scarce and it just like all those long shelves and nothing really on it. It was, you know, it was really, it was kind of sad and disheartening to me. I was the Lord have mercy. I had never really seen it like this before. You know, it, it made you get real right quick like it. So when I went to the store that uh uh I went to last week, we call it my grandbabies call it the pig store. Now are you going to the pig store? And uh everything was looking so much like normal, even though we had our masks on and people was you know, just even they're speaking like they were glad to see us. This is bringing on a good change. People were just like, I'm not scared of you and all that, but I'm just going by the rules and stuff like that. And I was actually saying we we were so respectful as somebody was up there uh, uh, picking some tomatoes, uh, getting them some bananas, and was taking them in and everything. The people just take your time. Take your time. I'm, you know, whatever. It wasn't like I'm in a rush, I'm hurrying or whatever. And I said, well, I hope, this, I hope everybody do see you know, this do come out with a, a different attitude. But they had some beautiful collars in there. And it was a lot of collars, and everybody was just getting collars and all that. And so I, I managed to get one bunch, because the collars was only like um, two, uh, 250 a bunch, two for five. And they was huge bunches. And they were some good collars, real good collars. And um, so uh, my husband went up there and picked me out a bunch. And uh, I would have wanted to get two, but that was, you know, it was maybe about four of them up there left, and he just got the best, the best of one bunch of them. Uh, I'll turn this back up a little bit, you guys. I was gonna wait to go off when I when I get ready when I get ready to turn this. I go off, and then I. Uh, when I come back, I you know, fried up all the pork chops and stuff, and uh, ready to make the gravy. Pull the pull the grease off, and ready to make the gravy, and then show the uh, smothering of the pork pork chop process. Mm. 
And I hope everybody is doing good and in better spirit, spirit and hope that we know that this hill will soon be over. It's and behind us or whatever we want it, uh, you want to call it, but uh, I can just feel it. I can just feel it in my spirit. But um, like I say, let us not forget the ones that uh, didn't, this didn't turn out well for them, the families and stuff that are uh, affected by this and all that. I just we just forever keeping them in my in, the, in our, our our prayers because um, some of you may know some people that had the virus and and recovered from it and all. I'm telling you, all God got all power in His hand. He got all power. Some didn't make it through, but there's a lot of them that did, and they recovered. And and some 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 of the stuff I'm hearing, they you know. It's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead on the turn this, you guys, simply because I'm not I don't want this to get as hard as though I was uh just frying regular pork chops. I may let a couple of pieces get like that because when I do smother pork chops. My husband don't want all, he want just maybe like one or two pieces left out, just regular fried, and um, no gravy on it. So this is moving on pretty good, and uh, rather than hold you on here, I'm going to finish frying up the pork chop. I'll show you when I come back ready to... Um, make the uh, gravy and everything. I had a pork chop ready and you can see it then when it finished up and stuff because um, I just turned this and normally if I was just frying pork chop, just scrape pork chop, I wouldn't have turned it as quick but uh, I don't want to, it ain't necessarily got to get, you know, to that point. It's got, you can do it, it don't make no difference. But anyway, let me uh, dip off. <laughs> And I'm, I got to always say, uh, I'll be right back because I had this, you know, I told you I had this subscriber to, to, to tell me to, uh, I need to make a t-shirt with that saying on there, I'll be right back. And uh, I had a uh, Blake mama, she was saying that she liked that part where I said I'll be right back. And then I had another subscriber to tell, told me that I need to do a t-shirt where I said that uh, uh, cooking is common sense. And then that's another thing I want to tell you guys before I pop off. You know what I did that um the juice the other day with the beets and the uh, lemons and the oranges, the beets with the citrus fruits and the ginger. And I showed you guys the uh, cookbook. And I told you how I collected a I well I don't know if you want to call it a collection, but I had I had I you know got several of the uh, church cookbooks that they used to put out for uh church souvenirs during their church anniversary but one thing about them cookbooks you know they weren't put out by no you know no big professional group of, of publishing company some of the recipes in there oh uh, hold on just a minute <coughs> some of them recipes in there you may have uh they forgot to put salt in it or got to put milk or got could be baking a cake and forgot to put the sugar list the sugars in there or either sometime there they won't list the sugar over in the ingredients and will have it down in the um in the um in the in the uh instruction as to how to mix it up and i used to say i saw all these that that was so i thought it was just sweet and endearing because they was older cooks a lot of them because uh, some of them said it and that um you know they just they just slipped but the ones of us that got the cookbook i know with me i know that they meant to do it i mean they uh um uh, meant to put that in there because they have it down in the script in the uh, instructions or whatever or either they have it up there in the ingredients and then don't list down in the instructions how to uh, mix it up because i know for myself that's a lot that's when i tell you guys go back and view the video 
I don't, you know, by the time I was, uh, you know, uh, by the time I, the way I type and use the computer and stuff like that, by the time I get through adding all that stuff in the description when my daughter's not here to do it for us, I be spent my whole day doing a, a video. And I have, you know, I have other things to do. But uh, anyway, yeah, they would leave out ingredients and stuff. And um, I would say that's when your common sense got to um, come in. If somebody telling you to fix uh prepare something and you see um it didn't have any soda because I, I have gotten recipes where the uh it calls for I mean I have looked at the recipes and it was call it was called calling for all purpose flour to bake something and they forgot to put the baking powder, either the baking soda in there. So, oh, no, nope, that's not right. I know that you got to put baking powder in it and you got to put salt in it. So common sense told me that, that they just forgot it. Simple as that. Okay, you guys, I'll be back when it's time to make the gravy. Enjoy talking with you, though. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm, I'm back. And the pork chop is all fried up. Let me show you what it's looking like. I got it over here, you know, draining. You got it in there? I got the pork chop all ready to go into the gravy once I get the gravy fixed. And look, you guys, I got me some rice on. And you know, I got that video up showing y'all how to fix the fluffy rice. I got this rice boiling. So, uh, when, uh, you know, when we get ready to eat, I uh, have my rice boil. I mean, I have my rice did. Just go back and view the video, show you exactly how I'm doing my fluffy rice. I probably have to cut it off before I finish this video. But okay, I have drained, oh, got this thing kind of hot. I have drained all the grease off. I probably have approximately a fourth a cup. And then you see all that, that brown drippings and flour that's in that pot. You're going to let that stay in there. That's going to help you, uh, help the uh, browning of your gravy when you make an old fashioned gravy like I'm making right here. Now, I'm a, and I got some water sitting over here. I might use more water than this because I'm, I'm smothering it. But let me tell you. Uh, you can put chicken broth. I know a lot of people like to put chicken broth in their water, but I told you guys my husband like it the old-fashioned ways, and he kind of sit in his way. And I can't blame him because it's, it's real good like that. I, I can do it with, if I do chicken broth and everything in it, it's no problem. I mean, some, uh, yeah, not the chicken broth, but to put the, uh, the chicken uh, bouillon cubes in it. I'm going to go ahead on and put these onions in because my skillet is hot. That was um uh, that was one whole um uh, onion dye, whatever type of dice, whatever type of onion that you use. Can you take that and stick that up? So I always put that in, in first and just get that started just a minute. Get it all mixed up in with that uh uh dripping that's in the um now if you is fixing a lot and you need more oil than what I had in there go right ahead because I might have to when I put the flour over in here um uh, I may put uh a little bit more oil up in there if I think it needed because a lot of this in with the gravy and stuff you got the I'm gonna give you ballpark amounts and you just gonna have to Go figure. And remember, when I fry, I fry with a, a self-rising flour and stuff. I bread my stuff with self-rising flour. That's That makes a big difference in your gravy and frying your meats up. Okay. Let me sit something over here so I can sit my rest my uh, spatula in. I'm going to uh, sprinkle a little black pepper over here. And that flour will season and all that, but I'm going to put uh, just a, I'm going to show you how much, just to make sure. It has some seasoning in this uh in this gravy. I'm gonna put about this is probably about a little better 
than a, I say about a little better than a half a teaspoon. Okay, I'm, picking, I'm getting ready to go in now. I got them onions all situated. I'm getting ready to go in now with my flour. This is the same flour that I breaded the pork chop in. It's all seasoned and everything. And watch how I put it over in there. I'm sprinkling this out real good. I'm saying this is probably going to be about uh, a third of a cup of flour when I, you know, get it all in there. I don't want to put too much because it'll make it too too uh, thick because I'm trying to make quite a bit of gravy. I kind of sprinkle it out even so it will, you know, it ground up. Um, even it won't go to clumping and lumping and make it easier to brown. Now I got my burner right now. I got it on probably about a six. You don't be getting even need to work with it. I got all of it gonna get uh, kind of mixed up there together. But what you do be spreading it out. Now I'm going to brown this to flour and cook off the, 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 the uh, rawness of the flour. But I'm also going to be trying to cook it enough like you are. Uh, uh, where you're going to get that brown to it. That gives it a good taste. You know this is this is, this is similar to a roux. But it's not a roux. Because you're not going to use as much grease as you would with a roux. But I, I can about tell when that flour... And then really sort of like with the minutes that that flour should be that uh, flour taste because you want to get that raw flour taste uh, cooked off and then uh, that brownness when you brown that gravy it gives it a flavor all by itself. A whole nother take to a whole nother level. Can you see over this here skillet there? Or do can, I have to can now. Uh, you were blocking the stove. I can okay. see it now. See how how to see it? Hold on, let me zoom in a little bit. On, okay. All right. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to put any more oil up in there. I'm just kind of keep spreading this around so this flour will be browning in there. It's getting brown. And uh, that's going to help with your flavor. Browning this gravy like this, I mean this flour like this, that was what gives that gravy that unique taste. Sort of like when you buy a brown gravy mix in the uh, in the store, that's what they'd be trying to duplicate. But now if you mess around and pour your uh, water or your liquids over here before that uh, um, flour get brown enough and you won't have the brown gravy, that is no big deal. You stir it out, stir it out, and get it loose to the right consistency. And if you have a little uh, browner mix, just put that over in there. You can just tell your family um, it's just lighter than what it used. To. I mean, it should it's, it should be. Don't worry about it. You know, first starting out when you're doing your gravies. Uh, you just want to, like I say, you want to make sure that you are um, getting that flour cooked up. That's the biggest thing. Don't put it in there too early because, you know, some people told, I have had people to tell me they just put the flour and mix the flour water and put it up and that's the way they mix the gravy. I, you know, I, I don't know not how nobody uh, uh, cook unless they ask me. And was saying why that they couldn't get their gravy and stuff to taste like mine. I said, well, I don't mix the flour in the water and make it a, I make a, that's a thickening. You do that as a thickening agent, like if you're going to fix some noodles with some cream of mushroom and stuff like that. But to make a gravy, I was telling them, I don't know because I've never did that. That may be the reason you're missing your taste. You ain't got it. The right concept is for what gravies and stuff is. You're supposed to taste the um, that dripping that I left in here from them from, from the meats. I wish you could smell the aroma that's in this house. 
and uh, then getting that flour cooked off and I mean brown yeah getting the browning so that flour cooked off that browning of this browning that fly, flour uh, in the skillet like I'm doing it that gives it like I said give it a whole different taste that cooked flour just like it make it taste um I ain't for lack of a better word you would say nutty uh, that brown flour it gives it a it gives it a unique taste but you want to make sure you don't burn it that gives it another taste <laughs> Stay here with your burger. Stay here with your gravy because you don't want to burn it. Whatever you do. If you burn it, all you got to do, that's another no big deal. You don't need to make big deals out of things that you don't need to make no big deal out of and, and be intimidated by it. If you burn this stuff, all you got to do, put it in the garbage, wash your container out, get you some more uh, oil, grease, put it in there. You even don't, don't have to worry about that brown that was in there from the first pork, pork chop. Put your flour in it and store it over. Now, if I was just making it, not didn't have that uh, this that uh, brown flour in the bottom of it was a plus, you know, from frying that pork chop. But if I can come in here whip, whip up some gravy and not have that brownness in there and still, you know, it still tastes good. Yeah, just about there, you guys. I'll be putting my water in in a little bit. Let me uh, I hadn't used this spoon. Let me stir my rice and see how it's how it's coming. I believe I turned it too low, but that's all right too. I wanted it to, you know, get ready by the time I turn the stove up a little bit on that. I wanted it a low boil. I just by had it a low boil. And I can about smell and tell when this uh it's about ready. And it's getting right, it's getting about close to ready. And see how them onions and stuff is browning up? I put them onions in first and now I'm spreading all that flour and stuff out amongst them onions and stuff. Getting ready to put the water in. I gotta think this is uh let me cook some water. Is this this got four cups of water and I'll probably be using all of that and then some more because I put um like I said I put you see the amount of flour that I put in there. That's one good thing about these videos you seeing a visual and watching what a person doing that's gonna stick. That's gonna stick better than if you just doing a re I mean, uh, getting a recipe out the book. Y'all really don't know, cause we didn't have this except you know, but the older cooks and some people said that they can remember uh, what their mama and grandmama was doing, and they know that I was doing stuff just like they were doing, and I feel so blessed, cause you know I told you told you guys I asked the Lord when I started this channel, and and even in my life. Let me be a help to somebody. If that's the if that's the mission you want me on, and in, in all aspects of life, I like to be a help. I want to be a help, not a hindrance. And um, I knew, like I told you, going into grocery stores, and I see these uh, them uh, younger cashiers and different stuff up in there was asking me like, uh, what am I going to cook? And then y'all probably well, if, if you you probably have an experience of cashier and stuff saying that. Yourself, and some of the stuff they just don't know. When you don't know, you know, you you just can't. You know, some parents, you know, their grandmother's gone and gone on, and they can remember the grandmama cooking at different things, and they wanna, they want that. So I said, well, maybe I can, cause I used to say, a lot if I could bring them a plate up here, I would. Okay. Well, uh, this little light got me so so uh uh. Got my me so blinded. I don't. I can't tell 
whether it's brown enough or not, but I think it is. But then if it's not, then uh, y'all, you see the process I did? You do that, you all right. But um, you just, just need to brown it a little longer if it ain't brown enough. Okay, I'm gonna add my water to it. I want to add enough water to get it calmed down so I can get in there and stir this some gravy and stuff around and get it loosened up so when it uh come back to a when it come to a boil, I don't have to be worried about them lumps. See, if you don't put enough liquid within that stir now. That's that's not gonna work because that flour, once this water stuff start uh hit this uh flour, it's gonna start to um thicken up. I'm gonna get it at this point. See that little brown uh onions and stuff brown up in there? That's all good. I'm gonna let it start, I'm gonna let it come back to a Another boil before I add any more water to see how really how thick this stuff is gonna be. Okay, see now it's pretty still pretty thick. Okay, I'm gonna turn my stove down a little bit. I'm gonna turn it down even more, but I'm gonna add some more water because I can look at that and tell that's 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 uh, too thick. Like I said, if you're gonna use chicken broth. <laughs> um, you can have your chicken broth in that water. Put it in through the, uh, put your bouillon cube in that water. That probably would be better than just using the chicken broth being out the can. Okay, I'm going to let it come back to another bowl and let me cut this rice off before we have overcooked rice. Yeah, time to Oh yeah, I was talking and even paying no attention. See, guys, my rice is uh is ready. You remember how I do do, do my rice? I cook it like that, and then I just pour it in a column and strain it up, and it's be perfect. I think that's cooked maybe about fifteen minutes or fifteen close to twenty minutes. Oh God! Now I probably have to pour it up before because it if long if you leave it in that uh hot water is going to um, continue to cook. So I'm not going to just let it continue to stay over there. I'll probably be uh, pouring it up in a little bit. So soon as I get this gravy situated because uh, when I put my pork chop back in it and let it uh, let it get back to the boiling point, I'm going to turn it, I'm going to turn my uh, burner down to like a simmer a medium low simmer and let it cook like that to um you know the gravy cooks all up into the pork chop and stuff like that at least 20 minutes it really don't have to go that long if you don't want it to but you want the, the pork chop to be softened up and stuff because i'm gonna put a cover on it i'm gonna put my lid on it to smother it on down and you see no more uh even though you can see the onions in there you can't really tell no more uh flour that I put in there, how it um, thicken it up. Now if you were probably using a, a plain flour, it will not work as, work as well. Work as well. I've gotten so many people off of that their plain, not so many people, so many friends off of that their plain flour with bread and their chicken and uh, and um, and making their gravies. Even though you're going to season up that uh, that Seth rising flour. It, um, it don't matter. You can season it up. You know, Seth rising flour has salt or whatever. It just, that just makes it better to me. It's, well, I use plain flour so I can put my own seasoning in. I say, I use Seth rising flour and I still put my own seasoning. I go lighter on the salt. I'm going to put some more of this water and stuff over there. See when you uh, put your pork chop and stuff in there, you know that got bread, that pork chop got flour and stuff on it too. So you don't want to get this here. You don't want it. You want you don't want to leave it too thick. You got to let it all 
have it thin enough so it can cook up and then start to cook down if I'm saying that right. But like I say, just, you know, this visual should help you with anything that you uh, need on it. So that's almost four cups of water and I think that's about all it's going to need when it comes to a, uh, come back up to a boil. Yep. That's good there. Yeah. I'm going to put the, I can't go ahead on it. Let me see how much I got. Put the rest of it in there. Because uh, it's got to cook down. See, this gravy got to cook down. Got to, You ain't going to reduce it down to just whatever. You're going to reduce it down to where it'll be um, thick enough to stick to your rice or mashed potatoes or whatever you're fixing. cover that pork chop. My husband had already told me, he said, uh, if you put all the pork chop in there, that'll be fine. I'll take it out and smother it in there and smother pork chop in a while. So I don't know. I said, well, I'll put whatever uh, fit in that pot. about the right consistency of it. And I'm fixing to put my pork chops and stuff back up in there. Here, did you show them that uh, that thing where I pulled my grease up in to get ready to fry this pork chop? No, I didn't. See, you, can you show them that real quick? Okay. See, I, I, pulled, I pulled my grease up with just about any of my, especially uh, whether I'm frying something or not. I put pour it up, and then when it cools off, I take it and put it in the container that I store it in. Take it back over here. Wait a minute, let me see, can I show it to her? This is just a old stainless steel pot that used to go to a uh, 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 old mixer I had that the mixer been gone. But see when this here cool off, I got a frontal. Cause sometimes I put mine back in the, like the, the bottle that the oil came, came out of, I store it back up in there. And all that, that brown and stuff, I won't, I mean that dripping in the bottom of it, I won't let that go back in. And it's just like you strain it without spraying. Okay. Get back over my pork chops. Okay guys, I want y'all to see how the gravy is uh, covering the pork chop. Let's let, let me know that I got enough water in there. So I save you a piece back, okay? Okay. <laughs> mm. okay let me get back on your pork chop. Sure okay. Get it lined up here. I could have put it in there, but I thought, I said, nah, he gonna wish he had a, had him a piece of fry. <laughs> you on it? Huh? Oh, yeah, I should. Hey, guys, oh, my, there you go. okay, ready? My camera cut off, so I'm fixing to get ready to wrap this up, but uh, do you want to come up and see, uh, can you get up a little close and show them what it's looking like in the uh, skillet? Cause I'm getting ready to put the lid on it, and I'm gonna cut it down to like um. Oh, we got it. You got it. I'm gonna put the lid on it, and then I'm gonna let it simmer like this in maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. When I come back, everything gonna be ready, and uh, and that's it. This is my smother pork chop. You get pork chop, you guys. And you know, as always. If you have any questions, uh, whatever that I did that you didn't understand, just 
send me an email. I'll be glad to uh, help you, but don't let stuff like this intimidate you. Because once you start, you know, you, you try it. If you don't do it right, whatever, you'll get the concept as to what you're trying to do. And you'll be able to go in the next time and do it. Or even maybe with me doing it, it will help you like, oh, I wasn't browning my eyes uh, um, long enough. Oh, I wasn't putting enough water in it. Oh, I didn't have enough gravy over my uh, my pork chops. All of that, try to take this from it. And uh, I'll be right back and show you guys the finished product when the pork chop is ready. Okay, you guys, I came back on real quick because uh, uh, the uh, pork chop been, uh, been smothering about 15 minutes. I'm going to show you what it looked like at the 15 minute uh, mark. And uh, it's got probably less than 15 more minutes because uh, the gravy is well cooked. Can you see down in the pot again? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. It's cooked. And I'm just letting it simmer a little while longer. I'm going to let the gravy, the gravy I'm reduced now. And I want to see what temperature I'm simmering on. I mean, hot that little low boil. And I don't usually use a simple spoon over in my pot like this. And I don't think it start. <laughs> okay. I did add, um, before I started the, the cooking good, I forgot to sh do it, show it to you on there. I tested to see did I need any more salt. And I, I think I added probably, probably about a, another ha a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's all I added to it. I, I didn't add any more liquids other than what you see me put in there. About a total of four cups of water. And that there flour, what you see me put in there. So, I got the night and I have my timer on it. I had my timer set for, I went ahead on the set it at 30 minutes. But it's it's got 10 minutes and 35 Oh, is that wrong with that well man? Yeah, we see it. <laughs> that was crazy. I was thinking you was over there on the ring. I got about 10 more minutes left on it. And then it be ready. I'm going to... Uh, and then I come back and plate it up and show you guys the finished product. Be right back. Okay, everyone. Uh, this is the finished product of the uh, smother pork chop and gravy. Okay. Uh, let me tell you guys something about this rice. I'm going to serve you up some. But uh, when I was talking to you guys, when I was showing you the pork chop cooking, <laughs> I cut the rice off, but I left it over there in the uh, water and it was steady cooking even after I told you guys so don't make the same mistake that I make but it's okay it's one thing about me may you guys that I don't need to make a big deal out of I don't make a big, big deal out of it and this rice will be fine because this ain't the first time that I did that and and uh it probably won't be the last time I did it so I just let it stay a little too long in the in the water it ain't like I normally fix it but that's all right too so um, I'm gonna go ahead on the end of the video and then I'm gonna serve you out serve you guys up a, a dish up um, just like he was in my own home baby's uh, kitchen but let me say this again y'all let's let us please keep the ones that um, is affected by this uh, crisis that we're in now please do not I mean just let's keep on praying for them and um like I told you guys that um, I do old landmark style cooking. And it has put in my memories to go back to my old landmark style raising. How I was raised up. My granddaddy always used to tell. Let me give y'all a little quick tip. My granddaddy used to always tell us to have empathy for somebody when they're going through a crisis or your next door neighbor. Because he always used to say what's at your neighbor's door today it could be at your door tomorrow tomorrow and he said you want people to have uh uh you know compassion and empathy towards you as what you know whatever you're going through you know people may think not they hard so hard they won't need they don't have to think that they uh, uh kind words and different stuff like that matters 
and whatever. But I was raised up like that. This is nothing new to me. Like I am so thankful and so grateful because I know what somebody else is going through. That I can go through. I could be going through the same thing with uh, my family or loved ones or whatever. I was raised like this. This is me. I just have empathy towards people when they in crisis and stuff like that. That's just May May. That's part of May May. So if y'all see me saying stuff over and over again, like I told you, I was praying for them or whatever. But um, I want y'all to uh, know that I do have a happy table though. I ain't going over the same thing over and over. So let me serve you guys up uh, some of this uh, smothered pork chop and the rice and gravy. And I will see you guys in my next video. If you haven't already, subscribe. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be notified. And remember, you guys, in order to help my channel out and for my channel to grow so I can get better equipment and everything, don't skip the commercials. I'm just learning a lot of these things. Don't skip that little two or three minutes of commercial that um, come on on my channel or whatever. Please don't skip the uh, 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 commercials. Not on my channel, on any YouTuber channel. That's how they, you know, that's how that's how revenue come in. So when you skip the commercials and stuff like that, that's not a good thing. And I know most of the people that I have dealt with so far on my channel, they're, they're very nice people. I am so thankful for God blessing me with the type of people that I'm coming in counter with. That's God, that's God grace and mercy, and I appreciate it. So let me serve y'all this. Remember, you guys, I told you my rice got a little <laughs> stayed in the water a little too long. I ain't gonna even try to uh, pretend that it didn't. But uh, I promise you, I can cook fluffy rice, and this rice would be just as good. It's gonna be like the rice in a <laughs> uh, Chinese restaurant. So I ain't gonna put much like you know I normally always overcrowd y'all plate because I want you to have a lot. And then I'm gonna put you a piece of pork chop up here. It's all tender. And then I got this uh gravy over here that ain't got to uh you know I had it sitting over here a minute, so it may be not thickened up some. But we just gonna make it uh pretend like it's on the table. Let me get my rice set up. Uh, get me a little well there in that rice. And I know somebody probably gonna just take this plate and go right on the E. See that gravy, you guys? Okay. This is your uh, smothered pork chop. Is I'm in the picture to tell you, you have to let me know because you, you set up in a different I'm position. On the, I'm on the plate. Okay, you want me to set it down or what? You want me to hold it? You can it? hold it. Okay. So this is it, you guys. And I will see you out see you guys in my next video. Stay safe. And I got a lot of things planned for you. I got a lot of things planned for you that I feel that you would really be excited about it. My husband and said that he's going to start doing something in the garden and then when I get ready to go and um, buy my produce that I put up, just my peas and stuff like that, I'm going to see if I can't take you out to, down to that market because you know some people like, oh they may not want you to film in there and uh, I ain't trying to break no rules or, or somebody try to hurt my feelings because y'all probably don't figure out, no, some of, some of my viewers don't figure out I will clap back if you go too far. Um, okay. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.